Hey everybody, it's Pastor Brian Ross from Grace Life Bible Church. I want to welcome you to our midweek video on this Thursday morning. If you haven't already done so, if you consider subscribing and ringing the alarm bell and uh, uh, being a follower of our Grace Life Bible Church YouTube page, we would certainly appreciate that. We're glad to have you tune in with us here as always. It's great to have you with us. Our featured book is my new release the from this generation forever volume one inspiration class notes i've talked about this here for the last number of weeks this is uh 340 pages this is the first 27 lessons in my from this generation forever class which has been the adult sunday school class at grace life bible church uh, for quite a long time i'm excited to resume this class this coming sunday with lesson 176 we are coming up on the end of our sort of school term that we use to that we follow at Grace Life Bible Church, but we're really excited about this book. Um, we're getting a lot of good feedback. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. If you go to the link, I'll have a link here uh, direct to the publisher. You can click here and check out sample chapters, look at the table of contents, and I've also created a whole late, a whole video just about this. So please, if you haven't already done so, consider checking out the feature book also rumble we're up to 209 subscribers on rumble that's great news uh we've established this as an alternative to youtube should something happen to our youtube ministry so if you haven't already done so or you're into alt tech sites if you consider subscribing with us and joining us following us on rumble as an alternative to youtube we would certainly appreciate that as well so what I want to do is in this video is I want to sort of follow up from my message at the Grace School of Bible Bible Conference uh, from over the weekend. So last Thursday, I produced this video, Why Universal Reconciliation is a Dangerous Heresy, GS GSB Conference Preview. And then on Saturday, I taught this message, Why Universal Reconciliation is a Dangerous Heresy. So this is the actual message from the conference. I'll have links to both of these videos in the description for this video. But I want to follow up <clears throat> because there were some things that I really wanted to get to that I just had to cut out of my message from the conference because I just ran out of time. There just wasn't enough time uh, to be able to address everything. All right. And there is a section of verses here that I want to look at, particularly as they relate to the concordant version. And I, I, I want to really make sure that I say something that I wanted to say on Saturday, but that I just forgot uh, being pressed for time and what have you. But before we, I say that, I want to kind of look at some of these references. Now, if you watch my video or follow the teaching from Saturday at the Bible conference, you know that I talked a lot about the concordant literal New Testament, the concordant version, all right? And I also talked in that video about how there are multiple editions of the concordant version. The one that I have pictured here on the screen is the original one from 1926. This one is the sixth printing or the sixth edition from 1976. The third printing of the sixth edition is the one I have in my hand here in blue. This is the one I had with me in the pulpit um, on Saturday when I read some examples uh, from the concordant version. Universal reconciliationism cannot be sustained out of a standard mainline Bible. For example, most notably, the King James Version. The King James Version translators acknowledge that the Greek word eon could be, in some contexts, related to a age or a definitive period of time. In other contexts, they acknowledge that it could be eternity and that there are various usage, depending on the context, for the Greek word eon. Okay, Now, let me just say, that is true from Wycliffe going all the way through, even into modern versions, be it the NIV, the ESV, whatever version you want to talk about, acknowledges that the Greek word eon could refer to a limited period of time or it could refer to eternity. So... What happens then is those who want to deny the issue of eternal punishment, they have to do away with this. And so what they do is they come up with their own version. They come up with their own translation that they then use to substantiate their universalist claims. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at a, a bunch of verses here that we did not have time to look at in the sermon from Saturday, just because I just didn't have enough time to look at all of them. All right. Now, 
I did read if you're if you're following along here um, with what's going on. I did read about the eons. We talked about uh, the uh, uh, A.E. Knox view of this. I read from these verses here in Matthew, but I didn't have enough time to look at these ones here from John, Romans, and a couple other places. So what I want to do is I want to actually go into the concordant version here and show you what is going on. So the first one we want to go to is John chapter 3. So let me just punch in the correct page number for this. Let's go to John chapter 3, and let's look at verse 15. Notice what it says. Mankind be exalted that everyone who is believing on him should not be perishing, but have Eonian life. Okay. Now, King James Bible there says everlasting life. So this is a clear change in the concordant version to Eonian. Eonian meaning a, a life only lasting for a age or a small period of time, not eternity. All right. You can see the same thing in John 3, 16. For thus God loves the world so that he gives his only begotten son, that everyone who believeth, everyone who is believing into him should not be perishing, but have Eonian life. So the concordant version does not support the idea of everlasting life. In fact, Nock says, and he sustains the idea that the Bible says nothing about eternity at all because he always, ever, and only translates the Greek word eonian as eon, eon, e eonian, or eonic in his uh, concordant version. And again, this is to do away with the Bible teaching anything about eternity, because if you can do away with the Bible teaching anything about eternity, you can do away with the issue of eternal punishment, which is exactly what Nock is attempting to do. Let's go look at Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Let's go look at Romans 6, verse 23. All right. So here's Romans 6. Let's scroll down here and look at verse 23. It's going to be a little bit of a hard read just because of the, the nature of the copy here. Okay. It says, for the ration of sin is death, but God's gracious gift is, and you can see it right here, you can make it out, Eonian life in Jesus Christ. So you do not have eternal, the gift of God is not eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, as in the King James Version. It is Eonian life. It is life that only lasts for an age or a number of ages. It is not everlasting life. The gift of God in the concordant version is not everlasting life. All right. Now we could also look at some things here in Romans 16. Romans chapter 16, verses 25 and 26. Romans 16, verses 25 and 26. Now look here at verse 25. Now to him who is able to establish you in accord with my evangel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ in accord with the revelation of a secret hushed in times Eonian. So it's not that it was hidden before the foundation of the world. I mean, if, if you take a King James Bible and you look up that verse, Romans 16, 25, in a King James Bible, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Well, not here. It's just hushed in times Eonian. So what I find interesting is that prominent te a prominent teacher who's trying to portray himself to his audience as still a right divider, yet also a universalist, is really playing fast and loose here and selling a bill of goods to his audience because he's not being honest about what he really thinks about these things, all right? This is not, the mystery has not been kept secret since the world began in a King James Bible if you're going to say, as has been argued by the same teacher, that you know, the word eon is is simply just a, you know, it's, it's simply just an age or a limited period of time. Look at the next verse. Now we get into issues of questioning the actual deity of Christ. Yet manifest now through, through prophetic scriptures <clears throat> as well, according to the injunction of the Eonian God. The King James says everlasting God. So again, this is an attack not only on... Um, the issue of eternal punishment, but this is an attack on God himself because God is not an everlasting God 
in the concordant version. <clears throat> and it also is undermining dispensational truth. So you can't have it both ways, okay? You cannot be saying, it, it is ultimate private interpretation to be saying uh, what to, to be saying what a particular teacher is saying, and what is going on is he's not being honest with the audience about what he's thinking, because on the one hand he wants to teach dispensational truth, he wants to he won't come out and say that he's no longer a King James advocate, because if if he does he'll realize the, the audience will realize how far he's actually strayed and he's going to lose followers, and that's really what the main issue is. So there's a dis, there's a fundamental dishonesty that is that that is sort of embedded in all of that. Okay, now we can look at some more examples here, just about issues related to eternal punishment. Let's go to Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter one. Let's look here at verse nine. Okay, verse nine. Now let me read this. I I did reference this in my message. When I talked uh, from Saturday, when I talked about the argument, uh, where I was talking about theological arguments used by universalists, and I was talking about the argument from Paul's use of hell, and I, I read this verse because Paul does talk about the issue of eternal punishment. First, Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, Verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the power of his glory. Not in the concordant version. Look at verse 9. Okay. Jesus uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall incur the justice of Eonian extermination from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his strength. It is not everlasting destruction here. It is simply Eonian. It is changing the substantive content here by saying that is just an age or just for a limited period of time and that it's not everlasting. So again, you have to have your own translation in order to substantiate these things. We could go also and look at the book of Jude. So again, these are all references that I didn't have time to get to. Um, and let's see here. Do, do, do. Where am I looking at here? What verse? We want, actually, I think it's verse 21. So apologize there. I punched in the wrong page number. So let's fix that and go here. And we want verse 21. Faith, praying in Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, anticipating the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for Eonian life. So it's not everlasting life. All right. We could go to verses in the book of Revelation. Uh, talking about the punishments and so forth, and see that these things are also undermined here. All right, so let's go to Revelation 14, look at verse 11. And before the lambkin and the fumes of their torment are ascending for the eons of the eons. So again, the eternal punishment described here in Revelation 14, 11 is only temporary. It is just Eonian, according to Knox's concordant version. We could also go to Revelation 19. We could also go to Revelation 19. Let's look at verse 3. Revelation 19, verse 3. Notice, um, and a second time, as they declare, Alleluia, and her smoke is ascending for the eons of the eons. So again, the eternal punishment described here is only temporary. It is only for an age. It is only for a limited period of time or ages, possibly, depending on which uh, teacher you're listening to. But it is not everlasting. We could also go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And we could see also here the same thing. Revelation chapter 20. Let's look at verse 10. All right. Notice, um, and the slanderer who is deceiving them was cast into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the wild beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night for the eons of the eons. 
So the adversary is only in a limited, it, it, it's own, his punishment is only for a limited period of time. It is not for eternity. And we also need to go back, just look at a couple more here. Just a couple more. Again, these were all references that I wanted to cover, but didn't have time to. Let's go to Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Notice the seventh messenger trumpets and loud voices occur in heaven saying, the, the world kingdom became our Lord's and his Christ, and he shall be reigning for the eons of the eons. Amen. So Jesus Christ does not reign eternally according to the concordant version and the doctrine of universal reconciliationism, all right? And then we could just, again, go to one more spot where we can see the attack on the nature and character of Christ, and that's in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. I covered this in the uh, message from Saturday, but I wanted to mention it again. Notice, now to the king of the eons. Now, you need to compare that with what it says in your King James Bible, okay? You need to compare that with what it says in your King James Bible. So I'm going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, all right? I'm going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, if I get the pages here to cooperate in my Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Now to the King Eternal. Notice, now to the King of the Eons, all right? Now to the King Eternal, invisible, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. This is clearly talking about God the Father, all right? To the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Notice the attack on the deity. Notice the attack on the eternality of God, the Father. Now to the king of the eons, the incorruptible, invisible, only wise God, be honor and glory for eons, for the eons of the eons. Folks, in the concordant version, God is not eternal. All right. Now, here's the point that I want to make sure that comes across. The primary teacher right now of universal reconciliationism in the dispensational space who wants to be perceived and thought of as a right divider has a, is playing a dangerous game with his audience, okay, in the following way. He wants to do away with eternal punishment, so he has taught extensively on the issue of how there is no etern eternity in the Bible, how the Greek word eon is always referring to an age, to a limited period of time, ignoring the, the, the undermining here that occurs when you do this to the nature and character of God, also how it throws the issue of dispensational truth into flux, as I showed you there in Romans chapter uh, 16, on verse 25 and verse 26, all right? And all of the while, he will not come out and say that he is no longer a King James advocate. He is, uh, he is undermining the text, and he is banking on the fact that the audience that has listened to him for years and years and years be this great exponent, uh, expositor of, the, of King James onlyism and the King James text and the great defender of, of it, at least that's the way he portrays himself, now is into a doctrine that cannot be sustained out of a King James Bible. And I will go even further, now out of any mainline evangelical Bible, modern or otherwise, it is only sustainable out of its own private translation of the Bible that undermines the deity of Christ in John chapter one, like I showed, like I demonstrated in the teaching from Saturday, questions and undermines dispensational truth, questions and undermines the issue of the eternality of God and God's fundamental nature and character, and certainly then is all that's all being done to escape the issue of eternal punishment through a private translation that is only acknowledged and recognized by those who want to argue for universal reconciliationism. So those of you that are listening to this teaching, and this, te this teaching coming out of Connecticut, you need to start asking some questions of your teacher. Is he still a King James advocate? Is he still a rightly dividing dispensationalist? And if he is, how can he sustain those teachings in, uh, in the face of other things that he has said that are clear undermining of the King James Bible? 
So that's really the, the, the main thing that I wanted to point out, okay? Before I go, I want to remind you about our featured book here, the From This Generation Forever, Volume 1, uh, The Study of God's Promise to Preserve His Word. This is uh, the featured book here for at least for the uh, foreseeable future as it is our uh, newest release. Hey, if, if, if you uh, haven't already done so and you're into alt text sites, just want to remind you about Rumble. If you like this video, if you found this inf uh, information helpful, if you would consider liking, sharing, leaving a comment as a way of helping us to get the word out about this channel, just want to remind you about a couple things. Grace History Project is being rebroadcast on this channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 9 a.m. And we are now up into talking about the life and times of E.W. Bollinger and rightly dividing Bollinger's ministry and why we need to do that and recognize his early ministry from his later ministry. So we want to remind you about the Grace History Project. I want to remind you about the From This Generation Forever class. We're coming to the end of the term. We'll be going live from the church building on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. with our next lesson as we are following the primary work in progress documents in the production of the King James Bible. I want to remind you about our Just Grace It podcast that my wife and I have. We do have a new episode uh, that my wife released. She flew solo on an episode here and about self, mindset, and business. If you haven't done so, check that out. And join us. We want to invite you to join us at Grace Life Bible Church in our 2022 Bible Reading Challenge in reading through Paul's epistles every month. Here's uh, some videos explaining the challenge and then a couple different um, reading options or reading plans and then three different links to three options for different King James readers Bibles. And we want to remind you about our live stream. We go live from the church building every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and then at about 1040 with our main service. You can watch us on YouTube, Facebook and new this year in 2022. You can watch us live right here on the church's webpage by just clicking on the live stream and this window will populate with that live stream. So we, we try to uh, have many different options here, avenues to edify the body of Christ. We appreciate you tuning in. Before you go, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ, if you've never relied exclusively on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the only total complete payment for your sin, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin, shed his blood in payment for your sin, was buried and rose again, and is ready and willing to give you eternal life as a free gift if you will trust in his death, burial, and resurrection as the only payment for sin. If you do, you receive eternal life as a free gift. You'll pass from death to life. You'll be taken out from under the kingdom of darkness and translated into the king, out from under the power of darkness, excuse me, and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Trust Jesus Christ today before it's everlasting too late. Thanks for your time.